The movie begins by showing the scene in the depths of the Russian Barents Sea where Konik, a Russian Federation combat ship, is patrolling the area. The Acula-class ship was unaware they had been scouted by Tampa Bay, a U.S. destroyer-class killer. The reason is a ship with the killer class is not easily detected by the sonar of any ship that has a lower class. Currently, the U.S. Tampa Bay ship was only tasked with surveillance and reconnaissance of the Russian Konik without any attack. However, an explosion on the Russian Konik ship suddenly occurred, with no sign of missile firing from outside. Shortly after the blast, a torpedo missile from above sea level unexpectedly fired the U.S. Tampa Bay. It was still unknown who launched the missile, but it could be ascertained that a significant explosion resulted in the U.S. Tampa Bay ship being destroyed. The scene turns to the U.S. Military Command Center in the Pentagon, where Admiral Fish gets a report from Pentagon staff that the U.S. Tampa Bay has been missing for two hours. They didn't get any information from the ship's captain and failed to detect a sonar signal since it entered Russian Barents waters. Pentagon staff felt there were irregularities because the weather was so clear at that time. So, there was only a little chance of a rainstorm and thunderstorm disrupting the signal. What's more, they conducted an inspection of the radio transmitter used to detect the ship's sonar signal and found no issue with the transmitter. Admiral Fish then reported the incident to the military commander, Charles Donegan, who immediately assigned a special team to search for the missing U.S. Tampa Bay. The special team conducting the search operation will be led by a naval military officer, Joe Glass. Even though Joe Glass still doesn't have much experience being a ship captain, he is one of the most reliable naval officers on the mission. At that time, Captain Joe had just arrived on a U.S. Arkansas submarine that was docked at the Scottish Fastlane Naval Base after he made his way to the Portsmouth base. A Marine named Brian Edward immediately welcomed Captain Joe. Brian told Captain Joe about the classified news the Central Fleet ship gave about Captain Joe's mission to be conducted. Captain Joe immediately ordered Brian to gather all the crew and prepare for the voyage to the destination. The crew that will be the special team for the U.S. Tampa Bay search mission just got two days off, but now they have to get back on another mission from their superior. The entire crew set up all the weapons and combat equipment needed for the mission. They have also prepared a Mystic Capsule, a small submarine placed on the aircraft carrier's hull and often used in underwater rescue missions. Before they set out on this mission, Captain Joe directed the entire crew regarding their current goals and mission. They would sail into Russian waters to discover the location of the likely sunken U.S. Tampa Bay and find out the cause of the accident. Captain Joe instructed all crew members to always be disciplined and not to act outside his command so that the mission could proceed smoothly. The scene switches to Pentagon headquarters, where a female commander, Jane Norkius, told Admiral Fish that she and her team had been watching the Russian president since she built a fleet in Polyarny, precisely near the Kola Peninsula area, Russia. Jane revealed that before the explosion of the Russian federal ship, Konik, the Russian president had left the area as if the party causing the explosion wanted to hide it from the president. Jane also explained that the Russian president will currently meet Durov, the Russian defense minister. Jane suspected something would happen at the meeting, so she asked Admiral Fish to send troops to conduct reconnaissance on the land. Meanwhile, in the Vodet Desert in Tajikistan, a U.S. special forces headed by Captain Bill Biman is conducting combat training in an empty building. After completing the exercise and returning to the base, they heard from the captain that they had a special mission to conduct reconnaissance of the Russian president in the Polyarny area. A member named Paul Martinelli and others rushed to the site to conduct surveillance from the mainland. Meanwhile, U.S. Arkansas submarines have also embarked on voyages to their destination to search for U.S. Tampa Bay ships. The scene turns to the Polyarny naval base, where the Russian president, Zakharin, wants to meet with Defense Minister Durov at the headquarters of the Polyarny Command Center. At the same time, U.S. special forces that had arrived in Polyarny's territory started to conduct reconnaissance by plunging from the air and landing at the Polyarny border. The scene shows a U.S. Arkansas submarine that arrived on the Kola Peninsula, Russia, approximately 40 miles from the Russian mainland. Captain Joe ordered Brian to circle the area and scan the Russian ocean depths to find the target immediately. During the scanning, Captain Joe suspected there were other submarines around, so they had to be careful. After a few minutes of searching, they found the body of the sinking U.S. Tampa Bay due to a missile attack from the outside. They also found a Russian Koenig that was not far from the U.S. Tampa Bay was found. But they felt there were irregularities in the explosion that occurred on the Russian submarine. Looking at the situation, Captain Joe had a feeling that there would be another submarine that would attack their ship. He then ordered the entire crew to prepare their weaponry and combat equipment. His allegation proved true. There was a submarine hiding in a chunk of ice floating on the surface of the Russian sea. The ship was a Russian submarine, Volkov, which had previously fired torpedo missiles at the U.S. Tampa Bay ship. Shortly after, the U.S. Arkansas submarine was detected. The Volkov immediately fired several missiles at the U.S. Arkansas submarine, but fortunately, the Arkansas submarine could avoid the fire. 
After the incident, Captain Joe immediately ordered the crew to approach the Russian Volkov submarine from the other side and start firing multiple missiles until the ship was destroyed. At first, Captain Volkov thought that their ship could not be detected by missiles from enemy ships, but thanks to the direction of Captain Joe, the U.S. Arkansas blew up the ship. News about the Russian Volkov that has been blown up by a U.S. submarine has reached the headquarter of the Russian Polyarny Command Center. President Zakharin and Defense Minister Durov received a report from headquarters that their submarine, Volkov, had been attacked by a U.S. submarine on the Kola Peninsula. Defense Minister Durov advised the president to deploy a Russian fighter ship to attack the U.S. submarine, but President Zakharin rejected the suggestion. He wanted to contact the U.S. president to find out what happened to the two submarines and uncover the reason for the attack. The scene turns to the U.S. Arkansas submarine that had successfully defeated the Volkov, and now they're scanning the depths of the Russian Barents Sea again to check the Tampa Bay and the Koenig. When they found the body of the Koenig submarine and saw the explosive marks on the ship, Captain Joe suspected that the explosion was not caused by a missile fire from outside the ship but rather a shot from inside the ship itself. He believed someone had sabotaged the ship to make it look like an enemy had attacked it. They also discovered that there were surviving crew members on the Russian submarine, so Captain Joe took the initiative to save them. At first, other Arkansas crew members were hesitant about his decision considering that they would rescue enemy crews. But since this was an order from Captain Joe, they were forced to save them by using one of the mystic capsules they had prepared. They rescued three people, the captain of a ship named Sergei Androko, and two other crews. The scene turns to the Polyarny border, where U.S. Special Forces led by Captain Bill are preparing to go to the Polyarny naval base. They had also set up a water drone that was very difficult to detect by enemy sonar to recon the Russian military base and broadcast reconnaissance results live to Pentagon headquarters. On the other hand, President Zakharin appeared to have difficulty contacting the U.S. President's office in Washington because all landlines had been blocked. The President realized that something terrible was being planned by the Secretary of Defense and the Russian Naval Military Forces. What's more, at that time, President Zakharin witnessed Russian battleships sailing into the waters of the Barents Sea without his permission. Shortly after, Minister Durov and the military came into President Zakharin's room and killed the entire presidential security guard before they finally caught President Zakharin. When the headquarters of the Pentagon and the U.S. Defense Department found out about it, they immediately held a private meeting with the U.S. President. They suspected that there had been a coup in Russia. After brief emergency negotiation, Admiral Fish suggested carrying out a rescue mission for the Russian president before anything went wrong. Therefore, he ordered Captain Joe and his team to sail to Polyarny Naval Base to rescue four U.S. Special Forces personnel and President Zakharin. Unfortunately, to be able to go to the site, they had to pass through a minefield equipped with sonar destroyers and sound field sensors that were very difficult to pass. Captain Joe approached Captain Andrikov and asked him for instructions to pass through the minefield. Initially, Captain Andrikov refused to help, considering it meant the same thing as allowing the enemy to infiltrate the Russian water zone. But after Captain Andrikov learned about the coup and the arrest of President Zakharin by the Russian defense minister, he changed his mind and was willing to help Captain Joe. Captain Andrikov and Captain Joe then cooperated to guide the crew of the U.S. Arkansas submarine to safely cross the most challenging line. By regulating the ship's height in a dive, arranging for the sound from inside the ship to be suppressed as little as possible, and avoiding the rocks around the reclaimed area to slowly pass through the dangerous path smoothly. On the other hand, the U.S. Special Forces that had arrived at the Polyarny Naval Base had a little accident where one of Paul's legs was shot, so he couldn't run. The rescue mission of the Russian president could only be carried out by three personnel under the direction of Captain Bill. They began approaching the Russian military command headquarters by diving into the Polyarny Sea. They went to see one of the Russian presidential bodyguards who had survived the Russian army forces. After learning that the U.S. wanted to help them, the Russian president's bodyguard teamed up with U.S. Special Forces to rescue President Zakharin. After they found the location where President Zakharin was in captivity, they immediately attacked members of the Russian military who were guarding with several shots, and there was a gunfight between them. Fortunately, after a tense firefight, the U.S. Special Forces managed to rescue President Zakharin and take him to a safer place by diving into the ocean. After they dived to the other side of the land, the U.S. military and President Zakharin still had to run to avoid the bullets from Minister Durov's troops. Unfortunately, the situation was very unfavorable for them. They were almost surrounded by Russian military forces who continued to fire from the opposite direction. But shortly after, one by one, the enemy's military personnel were killed by a sniper shot fired by Paul, who had been hiding in the woods and watching the enemy's movements. Thanks to Paul's help, Captain Bill and his men managed to get President Zakharin to run towards the docks even though two other members of the U.S. Special Forces had to die on the battlefield. After taking President Zakharin, who had been shot into the rescue ship, Captain Bill decided not to go on board. 
he returned to the Polirony Forest to pick up Paul, still chased by Durov's troops. At the same time, a Russian sonar destroyer, the Yevchenko, was sailing toward the U.S. submarine Arkansas. Captain Andrikov revealed that Yevchenko's crew members were highly trained military personnel, so they had to be careful and not act rashly. Yevchenko fired several missiles at a mystic rescue ship boarded by President Zakharin and U.S. Special Forces personnel. Fortunately, before the missile hit the mystic ship, the U.S. submarine Arkansas had first connected the lifeboat to its hull so that they could rescue President Zakharin from the missile fire. After President Zakharin entered the U.S. submarine Arkansas, they immediately released the lifeboat to the surface and drove away before the explosion. However, with the large number of missiles fired by the Yevchenko, the U.S. Arkansas was still experiencing tremendous shocks from the missile explosion. Not only that, the Yevchenko suddenly threw several water torpedoes into the sea, so they had to hurry to avoid them by diving to the bottom of the ocean. In such a situation, the U.S. Defense Department has prepared the entire fleet and military forces for battle with the Russian military forces that have prepared in the northern regions of Russia. The scene switches to the U.S. Arkansas submarine, where a slight leak in the ship's body, so a lot of water, is coming in. The situation got even more chaotic because an electrical short caused a small fire in the ship's control room. Also, one crew member was hit by a torpedo. Fortunately, all of the ship's systems and engines were still functioning correctly, and they could quickly deal with leaks and fires in the control room. When Yevchenko managed to lock down the U.S. Arkansas ship in a two-open position, Captain Andrikov contacted Yevchenko's crew to stop their attack. As Yevchenko's crew realized that Captain Andrikov had been training them to be on the enemy ship, they decided to hold their fire until they knew what action to take. Knowing that Yevchenko had stopped attacking U.S. Arkansas, Defense Minister Durov took the initiative to attack the U.S. ship directly. He ordered his troops to prepare the missile and fire it at the U.S. Arkansas. But before the missile hit the U.S. Arkansas, it was crushed by a destroyer from the Yevchenko. After that, the Yevchenko fired several missiles in the direction of Polirony's command base on order from Captain Andrikov and President Zakharin. As a result of these attacks and explosions, they killed Durov and stopped the coup d'etat that almost took place in Russia. After their mission was successful, Captain Joe and the rest of the Arkansas U.S. crew were thrilled and celebrated their success. They then took President Zakharin and Captain Andrikov back to mainland Russia using a boot ship and were escorted by several crew members. Captain Joe and the Arkansas crew had successfully fetched Captain Bill and Paul from Russian Polirony waters. The moral that can be learned from this movie is not to be careless, investigate and advance a conflict that will impact the safety of many people's lives.